Later on, when the season was over, our elder women would come back to the land and do this. It would burn. Fire's not gonna go away. We're seeing mega fires that are not only devastating to communities like we saw in the Almeida fire with 2,500 homes and structures lost. The importance of the funding, the importance of the program is both for human and for ecosystem, people in place. So it's very important that we continue these types of programs and we bolster that workforce and we restore ecosystems and we sustain communities. Lomakatsi is a word that means life in balance, good life, a Hopi word. It began with a prayer. This is the work that goes along with walking out a prayer. My experience in searching with Lomakatsi is that uh, they really look out for the land. That's not a going and clear cut kind of deal. It's a delicate thing to do in a rough manner. I feel like Lomakatsi really, really has a good grasp on that. Lomakatsi provides a lot of opportunities for like indigenous people, Latino communities. Not only does Lomakatsi help people and get them opportunities, but it's also helping mother nature and being outside and taking care of her. So Lomakatsi is doing a really good job with that. It's awesome to see women out here because definitely a male driven industry. I'm ready to show everyone what we can do, that we're just as capable as any man. Honestly, but like, find yourself. Yeah, you, but, yeah. you find yourself out here. My name is Belinda Brown. I'm the Tribal Partnerships Director with Lomakasi Restoration Project, and I'm a Coselecta band member of the Ajumawi Atsage Nation. A lot of these youth and families being separated in boarding schools, being uh, terminated, being taught that uh, being an Indian wasn't a good thing, they're having to overcome that. So this is helping the youth being able to overcome suicide, domestic violence, and all those symptoms of multi-generational trauma that happened when the boarding school period came about and when the native people, the Aboriginal people from here were separated from their homeland, from their heartland. So still today we're healing. And 1986 isn't that long ago, my tribe, the Ajimawi Atsage Nation, the Pit River tribe, is a young tribe also in the political governmental sense of 1992. So some of these tribes are just now growing up into sovereignty and growing up into the areas that they need to work and consult with the federal government and to work with our partner agencies so that we can work back on the land and be able to impart our knowledge, our Aboriginal knowledge back into this ecosystem. With a little dose of good fire, if fire is medicine for the land, we wouldn't be experiencing these mega fires at the rate that we are. So getting fire back on the land and being able to marry our indigenous traditional ecological knowledge and the best practices of land management, of which fire was a tool and continues to be a tool, we're starting to see improvements. And it's really important that the youth are connected again to their land base, to their ancestral land base, as the first best stewards of the land, as Aboriginal people are, and continue to be the first best stewards of the land. Getting back to that reference system and the Aboriginal uh, understanding of how we should live on this earth is something we're trying to educate all the time. So from cradle to the grave, and you're seeing K through six today, but cradle to the grave, food is our first medicine. So it's important, our elders will always tell you it's important that we eat what we gather, what we grow in the environment that we're in, that's always going to keep you healthier and living in the natural cycles of the earth, sea, and heaven.